Mississippi radio station, but one of the only places you can pick Satsumas, Satsumas, I'm going to say it right, right here in Mississippi is in Gulfport. And joining us to tell us a little bit more about their farm is Glenn and Valerie Merritt. Hey, Glenn and Valerie. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I am doing well. I'm so excited to have you guys on. I think this is a lot of fun. I, I hear that this started out kind of as a you know a family hobby, and it grew quickly into a thriving business. So when did your family get started growing satsumas? About 1999, really, is when we, all, we got everything started there. We built a house and then planted our first 100 trees. And that once they took off, then we knew we would be okay to plant some more. So we just kept planting 100 every other year. Now, usually you don't think of, of citrus plants as something that would grow in Mississippi. So what is it about Gulfport or the climate or whatever else in the environment that makes it suitable for happy satsumas? Yeah, we're the first people in the world to benefit from global warming. <laughs> 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 and that's what, that's what it is there. We're we're eight miles away from the Gulf of Mexico, so it it, it makes it a little bit more mellow weather down here. Uh, just a couple of miles up the road there, they get a harder freeze than we do. Yeah, that would be us right here in central Mississippi and on up to our friends right. listening to good things in the Mississippi Delta. They're laughing at the idea of trying to grow a citrus uh, plant, you know, in their backyard. And as I look through your Facebook page, I recognize that it doesn't look like a tree, like a satsuma tree, like I would think it would look. How do you describe the plant to someone who's maybe never come to see them in person? Well, the older they get, the more they look like a weeping willow tree there. They just, the long branches branch out there and lay, lay down, particularly when it, they get a lot of fruit on it. And it uh, stays that way for just about its entire life. It looks like a we- weeping willow tree, really. When they're loaded with fruit, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like it's a little mm-hmm. bit easier to pick. So when did you guys decide to take Merit Satsumas and turn it into a U-Pick, allowing the community to come in and maybe gather up their own Satsumas for their for their home? Well, we, we do quite a bit more than just U-Pick there. we got a stand on a, on a carport there we, we set up, and we sell it by boxes and bags, and uh, we sell it to some of the local grocery stores and everything else. So it's not just U-Pick. We also provide uh, fruit for the school, local schools just right around this area. So if, Y'all are uh, busy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Mr. Glenn, um, what's the Satsuma season? Uh, usually at the end of September, 1st of October. October 10th is when we really get to swinging good. To uh, January 1st, and sometimes it's even later than that. It all depends on what kind of summer and grow-out period we have. So you now have 400 trees there at Merritt Satsumas in Gulfport. How many Satsumas do you say that either you pick or somebody else is able to pick um, there on your farm every year? Uh, Normally, uh, last year and the year before, I think it was about 40 tons. Wow. That's a lot of vitamin (laughs) That's a lot of vitamin C. Well, you know, a single Satsuma tree will put out about three or 400 pounds of fruit, so if, if... and a lot of a lot of neighborhoods there, they put in a, a satsuma tree. It supplies everybody in the neighborhood with fruit. And about after they've been in the ground for about eight years, they put on a lot of fruit. Yep. Ah, as they mature, they kind of just keep giving back and keep giving back. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, if someone is listening to good things and says, you know what, I have heard about satsumas, maybe I've I think I've tried one or two, but especially as we get more north of Mississippi. How do you describe them to people who come in scratching their head? It's like a tan- tangerine, uh, but, but they're seedless. Uh, the satsuma variety is completely seedless. But you might f- find a, a fruit now and then have one or two seeds in them every once in a while. But it's closely related to a tangerine. Easy to peel. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you get other plants if they don't have seeds, Mr. Glenn? Uh, they're they're all hybridized. They're all grafted, bud grafted from a, a to a seed. Uh, they, they it's a long hard story explain. there. Uh, hard to explain. Yeah, they, uh, they're grafted. Yes. Okay. That's the only thing I can say. It's all all satsuma trees and citrus trees in general are grafted to a trifoliate orange trees. Which no, I think it's very hardy. interesting. Yeah, I mean, you just think like you would just go and put the seeds in the ground and then you get a plant, right? That's how you tell, they tell you that farming works, but it doesn't work yeah, that way every time. You won't get the same variety, though, when you try to grow one that way. 
Well, okay, that's not the only thing you guys grow there. What else you got going on at your farm? Well, we do all, all the citrus varieties, really. In fact, I got too many different varieties in the field there. We got navel oranges, uh, Louisiana sweet oranges, grapefruit, uh, kumquats, lemons. and lemons, and uh, a new variety called the sumos. Oh, I love a kumquat. I feel like anybody who's never tried one, if you see them one at your local grocery, you should just pick them up and give them a try. I think it's a fun well, little... There's, there's, two ver- there's two varieties of those, though. One looks like a football, and the other looks like a uh, marble, a marble, a uh, round ones. The round ones are sweet, and the, the ones that look like a football are sour. I think I've had, the, I've had the football. They're not as large as a football, but they're longer, kind of like a grape. Kind right. of... Right, right. yeah. Looking like a so grape. Come and get the round ones there. They're really yeah. sweet. Real sweet. So if people want to come and visit your farm and just get what you've got provided, maybe they don't want to pick. Maybe, they, maybe they're maybe they happy to hear that you have you have them already ready to go. Where exactly are you guys located? Uh, we're on Duckworth Road in Gulfport there. It's just about a half a mile from the, the city limits. And uh, we're about three miles away from the, well, a mile and a half away from the major highway 49. Are you open? What yeah, are your hours of, op- of operation? Oh, we're open from uh, 9 to usually around 5.30. People can call if they're going to run late. We're we're always here because we live on the farm. We live here. And so, uh, you know, if people want to come, but usually the vendors come early in the mornings so that they don't interrupt our uh, work time. Except for Sundays. So Except I, for Sundays. Sundays we're, we don't open until uh, 12 o'clock. Yeah, we go to church, and then after church we open. Well, we can appreciate that for sure. Everyone deserves a day of rest. Okay, Miss Valerie, right. you uh, sounds like maybe you have learned to make things out of satsumas other than oh, just yes, enjoying ma'am. them. So, if yes, we, ma'am. what else do you make out of them? Well, I make a I make satsuma jelly and a satsuma pepper jelly, which is my best seller because it's so different and unique. It's great to bake with and. Just eat with cream cheese. Um, I love to pour it on my ham when I bake a ham. And um, then I also make um, orange uh, satsuma marmalade. I don't make anything with the oranges or the grapefruits because I'm, we're real, really concentrated on the satsumas and what, what time we put into growing them. Do you make so all of that? It's quite fun. I enjoy, I enjoy making the jam jelly and the it's fun. You had me at the pepper jelly, and now I'm thinking, man, we're coming right around to Thanksgiving. Have a new glaze yes. on your ham, or even, you know, maybe you gift that for Christmas, and then you can put it on your Easter right. ham, something a little bit different. Yeah. Is it only um, purchased there on site, or do y'all have a website for your jams and jellies? No, it's all it's all uh, here. We well, don't we don't ship that because it's just we don't we're so busy at this time of year. We just do not have time. To, to do that, too. Well, that gives but it's us... a great visit if y'all would like to come and take a tour. I'd love to show it to you. I was just saying, that gives us a reason to come down there and uh, visit the Mississippi Gulf Coast and add you guys to All our right. list of places to stop. What is it about satsumas or about citrus f- fruits, Mr. Galland, that just said, you know what, this is going to be the, you know, the produce for me or sort of the crop for me? Oh, uh, it was a couple of years ago that uh, when we started this this whole thing there that uh, it's a beautiful tree. I mean, the satsumas in general they are absolutely gorgeous here. Until Hurricane Hugo came in and brought a little bug from Africa in here, it's called a leaf miner, and it makes the, it curls up the leaves and everything. But the the entire tree is still a beautiful tree. The only problem is that it's not. Uh, Cold hardy. The cold will kill the tree if it gets too cold for too long a time. And to me, about the trees, the trees are evergreen. They're, they stay green year long. So you know how everything turns brown north of here and you kind of get kind of depressed? It's always bright and green here. And in the spring, they smell so wonderful. Oh, my gosh. They just knock yes. your nasal passage yes, out. Yes, it's, it's wonderful. Beautiful. It's a great tour to come during the bloom season too because it's it just smells. All my neighbors just love it because we the whole place smells like a beautiful aroma of satsuma blooms. It's just you can't even explain it.
Well, I love it. The pictures look absolutely beautiful. We had someone on our text line say they just visited your orchard a few weeks ago, that it's a wonderful place and wonderful people. So we appreciate your time here on Good Things, Mr. Glenn and Miss Valerie. And best of luck to you, and hopefully we'll see you there at the orchard. Yes, y'all come on. Yep. All right. Thank you for calling. Absolutely. Thank you for putting us on. All righty, there you go. Who knew it? Mississippi can grow fruit trees. The next thing you're going to hear is there's someone growing coffee. No, that's a lie. We don't have that much global warming in our in our neck of the woods just yet. But stick with us. We got more for you.